with the 11th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Minka Fitzpatrick, defensive back, Alabama. Well, no surprise that another Alabama defensive back goes high in the draft. Minka Fitzpatrick played a little bit of everything for Nick Saban and was called Nick Saban's son because everything that Saban wanted done is exactly the way Minka Fitzpatrick played it out for the national champion Alabama Crimson Tide. Mel, he's versatile and he's really good. He's got a high football IQ. He has that. I mean, oh, Nick yeah. Saban raved about this kid. I mean, he's a defensive coordinator on oh. the field, Herbie. He's played corner, slot corner. He's played safety. He's done it all. All-time leader, school all-time leader at Alabama. In career re interception return for touchdowns. He had four of those. When he gets a chance to get the turnover, he's got the hands to catch the ball, get the turnover, get the interception. He sets everybody up, Herbie, on defense. He is a team leader, and he is a guy everybody respects. I remember watching him in his first scrimmage as a true freshman in their home stadium. It was a closed practice, and you're looking at all these superstar juniors and seniors, and I keep seeing 29 making plays, and when he'd come off the field, he'd stand next to Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator, and Kirby Smart, asking questions. The kid was 18. He'd been on campus for two weeks. He has the intangibles and the leadership qualities that are very unique. Well, not only that, he won the Jim Thorpe Award last year as the best defensive back and the Chuck Bettnerick Award for the best defensive player. Only Charles Woodson and Patrick Peterson had pulled off that double dip before. Let's go down courtesy of DXL. To... With the 13th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Deron Payne, defensive tackle, Alabama. Well, there you see Duran on the phone. So for the second straight year in the first round, they take a defensive lineman, Alabama. How versatile is this guy? Just watch Mel six minutes of the semifinal game against Clemson when he had an interception and a touchdown catch as a defensive lineman. The story throws stats out the window. He was a disruptive force for Alabama, very athletic. He was a guy that became a key entity that allowed this Alabama defense to continue to play at a high level despite so many losses that they have every year that they sustain. He is a guy that gets into that backfield, frees up your linebackers, they penetrate and makes plays. Kirby, to me, they were soft in the belly. I had pain rated ahead of them. The Redskins at 13 get a guy who's a hole filler. Jonathan Allen was great till he got hurt. They hope Payne to be the immediate star. You know, and he had to wait his time in Tuscaloosa. He had Jonathan Allen and Brian Anderson, other guys that have been there over the years. Sean Robinson, Jaron Reed, and he took advantage of that this past year. Known as a run stuffer, but got lighter, got stronger, and got much quicker. He doesn't have a lot of production as far as sacks, yeah. but he got a lot of quarterback hurries because he forced those quarterbacks to get rid of the ball. Just watch the game against Clemson. By the way, they offered him as a 15-year-old. Nick Saban said, we don't do that. Then they saw him and said, we do that. We have another they trade, go. by the way. With the 22nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Rashawn Evans, linebacker, Alabama. Well, no surprise that an Alabama linebacker is taken in the first couple of rounds. This is the eighth Nick Saban linebacker taken in the first or second round. And Rashawn Evans goes there from Auburn, Alabama to play at Alabama. His father went to Auburn to think he was going to be a running back, and then some guy named Bo Jackson showed up. It happens. Yeah. Rashawn Evans, though, pretty pumped that he is now going to play for Mike Vrabel in Tennessee. You know, John Robinson, the general manager of Mike Vrabel, had to be ecstatic to be able to put, I know they had to move up, but still to be in a position to get a player of this magnitude to play linebacker for them. It's a big need for the Titans. This guy's explosive. Uh, you're talking about a, an athletic guy who, you know, he grew up, Nick Saban was talking to us earlier tonight, grew up as a defensive end with his hand in the ground and played as a guy who rushed the quarterback. And early in his career in Alabama, this is what he did. They call these the rapid rabbit package when they bring guys in like a Tim Williams or Sean Evans early in his career to rush the quarterback. Then they started to move him back to that middle linebacker spot. He's going to become more and more instinctive. You can see how explosive he is when he rushes the quarterback. 
but you can put him, in my opinion, on third down. You move him down and let him stay on the field. He can not, not only can he rush the quarterback, he can cover, brings a lot of versatility, a lot to like here, not to mention he brings a real attitude and a guy you can put in the middle of your defense and really build around. And Lewis, you know, late in the year, he was injured early on. Yep. Florida State game got a little banged up, struggled a little bit, but late in the year, LSU game, Mississippi State game, the two playoff games, all over the field, blitzes inside, outside. I thought he could have been a Cowboy pick. Here he is for the Titans who needed to get a young, versatile linebacker who could get after the quarterback, Lewis. There's no question that versus Utility is the name of the game when you're talking about this guy. And again, think about the head coach. Think about the fact that it's Mike Vrabel. Think about where he came from. 26 pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. The Atlanta Falcons select Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Alabama. Another Alabama getaway, right? Wide receiver, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones. We've been down this road before in Atlanta, and it's worked out pretty well, Kirk. Well, it's the fourth player from Alabama here in the first round. By the way, sixth player that played in that national championship game with Alabama and Georgia going head-to-head. -head. You can see the emotions here. He's fired up and excited. And Calvin Ridley, to me, I think he's the best receiver in this draft. Has size, has length. 4-4 guy that can get him separation. He can, I think he can win it. He did get jammed a lot, but I think in the NFL game, he'll have enough ability to be able to work around people because he's so quick and able to separate. Serious speed, natural hands. Doesn't use his body at all. And he is, much like Moore, very dangerous after the catch. Not as physical as Moore. Moore with natural speed to be able to just outrun people, but not just a guy that can go downfield. He'll catch the ball underneath, shake people, to be able to get uh, some serious yards downfield. And like I said, I think he's going to have a better pro career than he did in college because of the way Alabama won with defense and running the football and field position. And now I think he's going to be in a position where he can really open it up with a, especially in, in Atlanta with the weapons they have around An NFL him. ready receiver oh, yeah. block and he will be a guy who will help out Matt Ryan. Yeah. Third wide receiver taken in the first round out of Alabama since 2011. Obviously Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, and now Calvin Ridley. Matt Ryan's one happy dude right now. Ridley, Julio, we can make some things happen, ladies and gentlemen. As Calvin Ridley is going to play alongside another Bama wide receiver. Alabama get away twice for the 